We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's gonna happen next? We are. Because our future is the future. The life we have chosen has prepared us for this. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. We're gonna save families from disasters and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. We invite you to join us. The next greatest generation is now. Well, hello again and welcome, everyone, to the Rally Cry Collegiate Series featuring Rocket League presented by the Army National Guard. If this is your first time joining us, you've skipped past all the hors d'oeuvres and appetizers and went straight for the main course, but you better sit tight in that seat. A five-course meal awaits, and plenty of colleges in this double elimination playoff bracket will hope to hand their opponents some just desserts. I'm Galgan alongside Relic, and Relic, it is finally time after four weekends of closed qualifier action to get to a 16-team double elimination, all best of seven playoff bracket. What is there to say? I mean, we've come so far and yet have so much more to go. Yes, indeed. Here at Cafe Rally Cry, we are honored to be your maitre d's, uh, at least for today. Uh, we've got a special guest coming in Sunday. So this is really your only chance to have a look at this playoff bracket, Galgan, before that grand final next weekend. And it will only be that grand final next weekend. So we've got to get up through a lot of action here today. Uh, and boy, oh boy, do we hope that action is good. Because, of course, it's worth mentioning that this entire bracket has been determined directly via the league table that has been of course ongoing over the last four weeks so if you have joined us now for the first time first of all welcome and i would say it's a good stepping on point but all of that lore all of that history it feeds into today because i think it's fair to say galgan that some of those early matches uh, they have some big hitters that will be heading down into the lower bracket at the first time of asking. And there are others who have stuck at it. They've stuck at the grind. They've earned plenty of points. And it could see them with a much longer upper bracket run than perhaps otherwise would say so. I'd certainly have to agree. And we'll dive deeper into those matchups. But first, let's talk about why these players are here in the first place. The prize pool that they have been fighting for all tournament long Finally, they can see the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. And for the top four teams in this event, that Rocket League series total prize pool of $6,000 goes halfway to the winners at $3,000. 1.5K await the runners up and $750 for both third and fourth place in this particular tournament. So a top four finishes the aim and the name of the game. Speaking of games, plenty of games across the Rally Cry Collegiate Series, so make sure you're checking out all that action as well, showing some love to every single game, every school, every player. But we're fixated on Rocket League right here, right now. This first round of action in the massive double elimination bracket. Plenty of early matchups that are going to be highly entertaining, but I think we've managed to pick one for stream that is going to be close, theoretically. Two teams that are very hungry have shown up the multiple weekends of the closed qualifier and want to prove their worth, prove their medal for everyone else. It's the New Haven Chargers against the Fisher College Pescados. But before we get deeper into that one, Relic, some of those other matches, I'm looking very specifically at the fifth seed <laughs> versus the 12th seed, which I say that seed. now, but <laughs> ah, those schools sitting in that position, I don't know. Listen, so Boise State, fair enough. They won a singular week 100 points in the bag uh, and they actually go on to win a tiebreaker match against oklahoma christian who also won a week and then just didn't turn up again uh quite convincingly as well i think 4-1 was the was the score line that i peaked there so uh, certainly looking pretty good on that one uh or it might be 3-1 actually i can't remember if it was best of five or best of... anyway point is it wasn't like super close pretty convincing from boise state 
And then you have Maryville. Oh, Maryville, Maryville, Maryville. Where do we start? I made a cookie, how the cookie crumbles joke uh, when we talked about them in week number one. Uh, and then we didn't see them since. Uh, the problem being that they didn't win week one. <laughs> they only picked up 25 points and they didn't turn up again. As it so happened, those 25 points, Galgan, were enough to see them through to the top 16. But they're facing Boise State. <laughs> I mean, this matchup could be grand final material. And hey, it might still be. That's part of the joy of having a double bracket elimination system. One of these teams could drop into the lower bracket and then do a whole redemption tour through the lower bracket. Everything's fine. We get a big grand final rematch. It would be exciting, but it just feels weird. <laughs> I mean, this is the first, that's a first round matchup and we're not going to be talking about it either because bless them, they have requested, I think it's a Mary Vols requested not to have it streamed because they're doing a LAN <laughs> and understandably there's a lot of compromises that they've had to do to be able to make it here. Uh, but no, we're going to be focusing in on the University of New Hampshire versus Pescados Galgan and this one I feel is a cracker as well. I think honestly, as much as I would have loved Boise State, Maryville, this one's got all the hallmarks of a game seven. Both of these teams made it through to the semifinals of one week each, albeit once they got there, they lost in sweep fashion. They are as proverbial middle of the road as you could get. And yet one of them is going to be heading through to the quarterfinal stage of this upper bracket so certainly a high reward on offer uh, or, or is it such a high reward given that your most likely opponent in the next round would be drexel dragons number one seed at the same time a, a team like the drexel dragons is a team that both of these rosters in front of us want to prove that they can beat and while they may have failed to do so in the actual closed qualifiers getting a win here securing the momentum you immediately play the next round upon the conclusion of this one it works well for both teams, and I think New Haven are a side that didn't have the highest of expectations behind them coming in, but they've been proving people wrong. The Fisher College Pescados, I mean, you say the name Fisher College, and you immediately start to think about some of the great CRL players we currently have in the scene. This roster, a bit lower down on the pecking order, but still, Fisher College has enough faith in them to bring them under the wing of said Falcons. Those Pescados, though, they gotta learn how to swim before they can fly. First appearance on stream for the New Haven Chargers. Good to see them in action. First time on stream for Mex Cynical stepping in for the Pescados here today. So a substitute already, not ideal for Pescados, but then again, this is the Rocket League esport that we're talking about here. An esport legendary in some regards for having super subs step in and make a big difference when it counts. Speaking of, that was a great opportunity for this. Straight off the crossbar, back in. Oh, it's off the post. Finally put home the third bite of the cherry. It's Tasek 1-0. They'll take it however they can get it. First minute of the first game of a best of seven, but something that New Haven cannot get caught doing in this series is chasing the ball like that. As soon as you lose control, Escobos all over it. They'll score no matter how shaky it looks. These two only separated by five points in the seedings. New Haven on 50, Pescados on 45. And we're just about to see why here as Oryx slams this one home. The mishy mashy sort of defending here from New Haven. Kevin meandering. Kasek misreads it on a plate for Oryx. Part of the Pulse Clan, don't you know? 1 1. It's a very nervy start, though, it reads. Obviously, the slow play on defense at the top of the box, you could write an entire dissertation about how that's usually not the move, but I can understand it from the perspective of wanting to gain control, lock yourself in, and just relax into the series. You know you're going to be playing a lot of Rocket League today if you keep winning, or at the very least, keep hanging on in these series. Both of these teams would like to get out of here as fast as possible, even though six or seven feels like the right landing spot. We're going to be heading all the way to the semi-final stage, and that's just in the upper bracket. There is, and I do not understate this enough, a lot of Rocket League to be played. Could not agree with you more. On top of that, you're the first series on stream two. A lot of pressure to be under to, to try and perform straight out the gates and both teams have seen good opportunities come and gone. They've both taken a singular opportunity, but 
two minutes in. We're still no closer to finding any sort of breakaway form. And Kevin in field, that's a lovely passing play. Kevin with the pop up, but what a great read there from Winsey. Good save away. Back to Taser, hitting that backboard. In comes Beck. Cynical! Oh, it's still not going to go in for him. Yes, it is. Never mind. It hit every piece of woodwork before it finally decided to fall for him. Couple of slow shots finding their way in, but the accuracy was all lock and a little help from your friends in New Haven on defense doesn't really help their case to get that ball clear fast enough. It's gonna be scrappy. I get the feeling that we're not moving away from that particularly quickly, which I guess stands to make the point, right? These Pescados, you expect the high level individual mechanical plays to come out. Maybe it's just taking a little bit longer for them to warm up into it, but as long as they have the lead, they feel as comfortable as they really need to. The attacking power just seems a little more in favor of Pescados. Setting up quite nicely, setting up excellent following opportunities. New Haven struggling to transition down the other side of the field with any sort of conviction thus far. Even Tasek here, <laughs> putting the car into reverse and then 90 degrees up, gets past one, not going to get past the second, and that's a big overcommitment there. Mick Cynical, he's got to be the hero, and the hero he becomes, goes up again, throws it down the other side of the field. Is this going to be a box-to-box -box champion moment? No, runs out of boost, runs out of talent, but Kevin's there in the wings, 3-1. It feels too easy at a certain point for Pescados, but they just walk it right back. The green light was on for New Haven, but they threw everything forward. And you're going to get burnt very easily in a sequence like that. So I'm not particularly shocked that we get a Pescados goal at the end of that sequence. But what an effort, as you pointed out, from McCynical, who seems to want to will this team forward, which is great coming in to replace Falls on this roster for this series. That's some pretty big shoes to fill. Doesn't look out of place, does he? Not at all. Taking him a couple of minutes and he's good to go. Still on loosey goosey defense persists. It's just New Haven's really not looking to poke and prod as much as their opponents right now. Another save by Marzi, but look at this Pescados encroaching on enemy territory. Finally breaks three for Marzi. Was looking for that slice of shot, maybe. Gets over the top of Tayset, gonna steal the 100 boost away. Well, Marzi, sorry, Winsy, I should say, coming up, but there's no support there after, and it allows Evan to throw it downfield, burns more time off the clock. Tasek wins the race to this one. Oryx tries to throw it upfield, but again, disruption plays from Pescados, and even going with a bit of a heavy handed back pass, it retains possession successfully. Level of comfort is exuded very well, forcing New Haven to play it central on top of their own zone. Kevin comes through to the oh. bar, and it bounces a few times for good measure, but it still finds the bat. Tasek, again, it's another lovely setup play, forces Marzi, Oryx, and, well, Winsy, almost tying shoelaces over each other there, rotation out of whack. And Pescado said so, uh, just looked far more secure in the midfield. And again, these transitional plays are the big difference maker in my mind, Galgan. One is really good at the moment right now, and the other is barely able to string much together. And, and because of that, it leads to more chance creation and naturally more goals. Very difficult for New Haven to grab control in their own right. Looking for the first touch to initiate some plays, oh, and they are gifted one at the bottom corner, but unable to put it home. Winsy will turn this one back around, but the damage has already been done. Chaos wrought by those Pescanos. They've grabbed the first game, and it really doesn't look too difficult for them, which is a concerning sign. New Haven, no, we can't play passive against this Pescado side. They need to get in their face, bring a little bit of their own medicine to this equation. Until they do that, the Pescados will continue to roll. Now, a trip to the doctor's office, the initial prescription, uh... Maybe not the right one, Galgan. Felt like uh, it was two teams who were trying to play a similar way, just one team far better at it than the other, which I feel is just a rehash of something which I said in a little bit more detail. But I feel like the problems are actually wider here uh, if you're New Haven Chargers, because if you're going to have limited opportunities, uh, or indeed if you're struggling to get out of the defense, how do you change to be able to break hold of the choke that your opponents have you in? Do you look for demos to relieve the pressure? Do you look to just hit it hard downfield? If you can't hit it hard downfield because you're running out of boost, well, how do you play it smartly out from the back? How do you lure your opponents in to overcommit to try and go down the other side of the field like we saw Pescado taking advantage of? I'm not seeing much on that front to suggest that this team is able to adapt in-game. 
I hope for their sake that the break is where we start to see that that shift in momentum because otherwise this is going to be a, a long and miserable series for them. But I think if you want to consider what these teams come into a series like this with and you use the bias of what they did in the closed qualifiers and whatnot, New Haven managed to secure a healthy amount of points courtesy of that week one finish where they grabbed 40 points off of mm. Maryville forfeiting that third place match. So that obviously propels New Haven very far forward. But if you look at their actual tournament, it's a game seven win over USC, a five game win over Rowan, which is a school that we did not see past that first week, and then a sweep loss to Oklahoma Christian. So you do start to ask questions for New Haven. Where are these results against not just teams at the top of the table, but those surrounding you, including the Pescados, who feel like they are exactly where they deserve to be in terms of seating, and yet have so much upsell potential that the sky seems like it's the limit. I think that's that's spot on, mate. I think that's absolutely spot on. I, I look at Pescados, and uh, we're, we're looking at it here. Me 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 Cynical's gone. False is back in, so it might have just been a little bit of a late to the party situation for False, but the fact that they look so accomplished with Mech Cynical in that trio, in that rotation, it is just a demonstration on a larger scale of, of how adaptable Pescados are. They might not win every series, but you're going to get a hell of a series out of them. And what a way to start! What an entrance for False! Yeah, if Mech Cynical was trying to will Pescados through game one, and then you bring false in. There's no way you call this a downgrade. No disrespect to either player, but this roster will stay level because it feels like one of the schools in this competition where they can do that. They can plug in different pieces at a time and still form a coherent game of Rocket League because they're just built that way. That's how these players have been trained. New Haven on the other side, we know that they have it within themselves in terms of individual skill, but when you're playing against oh. a team like Pescados who continue to make you look silly, it feels like your efforts become dampened as a result. I feel the benefit of the doubt is very quickly escaping my analysis of New Haven. Marcy simply has to read that better i know it's a very decent ball off that backboard it's you know obviously not the easiest thing in the world to try and react to but you've also got a player incoming goodness that was so close to three wasn't he you also have a player incoming who's clearly going to go under you because you committed yourself so early on in that defensive action here's false again just styling on winzy for free ksec hits it to the backboard as well new haven charges do not have a moment's notice to breathe galgan this could get very ugly indeed the amount of time this ball is spent in the air in the blue half you'd think there were rumble type magnets just waiting in the walls and the ceiling but pescados have that airspace to work with even now we have false just kind of waiting for backwards. Even though the ball's going towards the Pescados net, it doesn't matter. I, I talk about the level of comfort and there's no greater sign than right now where Pescados quite simply cannot be asked to go for a couple of the challenges that go their way. They'll still find the shots they want. They'll still force New Haven into awkward positions. And ultimately it's not going to formulate much. At least that's the belief that they hold. It takes an effort here from New Haven to try and shake up that narrative. Proverbially speaking, Marxi and Oryx are not even speaking the same language, let alone thinking on the same wavelength. That's now twice in both defensive and defensive phases where it's been very clear what they should have done and they didn't do it, whether it was someone having the easier clear or whether it was someone not clearing quickly enough to enable the other guy to potentially set up or maybe even just go for a straight shot. Pescados, I feel, will feel a little aggrieved that they haven't been able to open up this 2-0 lead, especially if that was on target, which it was. Marty denied by Pulse, who has made a big impression in game number two here. That's a great setup. That's almost a great goal. Marty from box to box, but the wrong way around. It's another big save. Pulse, a bit too far forward. Demo, there's the big clear for New Haven. Kevin has a little bit left on the plate here to clear from the corner, but two stacked up for New Haven. They don't have a shooter. They both went for the passing lane. Kevin will get this one off the clear and drop it down to the top of the box. But again, Escados don't feel the time rush to push up right now. They've got a 2 0 lead. They've got all the control in the world. They force everybody from New Haven up early. Oryx gets a good jump on this ball, however, but with no boost left. 
Pacek bails out the play, gets Pescado's clear again. Only one shot finds its way on for now. Kevin pancaked against the back wall to get it clear once more. As Pacek goes against two, finds an open lane, half pass, oh. it stands all but secured, and indeed it is as Pacek circles back around. And I love Tasek pumping on the brakes as soon as he has this lift. He knows he's got to stay a little bit further back. Foltz was being driven further and further eastward. So Tasek, because he's opening up that shooting uh, vector, he's able to uh, effectively walk that into the back of the net. Just a lovely power play again from Pescados after New Haven, not for the first time, find two players in the same position, both completely removed from the transition. Entering into consolation territory for New Haven, which is a tough ask. Going down 0-2 in the series in such a fashion, it has been a slow crawl to get this team going. And to your prior point, feel like they need to be on speaking terms in a language everybody can understand. Winsy with no boost as the lead challenge. Not going to get anything done. Marcy has to play this off the back wall and slow to do so. Keeps away from Kevin. The false will secure it anyway. Tries to go for the bump. Clears the lane for Taysak. And the Scottos just know what they need to be doing at every single step. I just don't quite know what Oryx was going for here. Fobbles had uh, literally living inside Oryx's head rent free. Uh, it's either the sign of someone who's a little too desperate or the sign of someone who clearly knows when they are well beaten. Pescados have taken to this playoff bracket, Galgan, like a duck to water. The New Haven Chargers, more like a brick. Just about 30 seconds to go. Hard to get a brick up into the air very easily. And well, I mean, had to get up into the air to provide any resistance to Teiseku. It just kind of feels like freestyling at this point. Taking the page out of Oryx's book from time at Pulse and just taking the ball, doing whatever needed to be done. A bit of stab padding, obviously, for Pescados. Uh, they're one greatest enemy from, from this point onwards, and I'm not talking about the next 25 seconds. It's very evident who won this particular game, but more looking towards game three and game four, where they, where they are now really talking about potential sweep territory here in this round of 16. They got to avoid that complacency. They've got to stay as humble as before because we got to give credit where credit is due. As much as we can ring on New Haven and the many, many mistakes uh, that they have accrued, more so especially here in this second five minute period, Pescados have been practically flawless. Rotationally speaking, uh, they've been fantastic following the opening two minutes of game number one where both sides. We're a little bit nervy, you know. They've they've hooked on to they've hooked onto this early momentum that they've been able to find for themselves, uh, and they're playing with confidence, and that's that's lovely to see. Right. This is the conversation that you never really want to have only two games into a best of seven, but you start to think about future opponents in this bracket, right? It's Drexel Dragons for the team that wins this series, and it's Michigan. I mean, well, okay, we're making assumptions that Drexel Dragons are going to beat Michigan State. Yes. It would be Drexel Dragons. <laughs> if they win, and it would be Michigan State if you lose. At a certain point, while I don't advertise this for players because I like to see comebacks, I like to see entertaining games of Rocket League, at a certain point, you think about New Haven, their position in this bracket, and how they expect to finish up. I don't think they're particularly worried about Michigan State. Again, a late addition to this bracket, courtesy of an unfortunate FF that led to everybody getting bumped up, and Michigan State on that 17th spot got their berth in. I don't think New Haven are particularly worried about that, but I do think they're struggling to find answers in a sense that makes it seem like they will before the fourth game of the series is over. I don't know how soon they start thinking about that next matchup potentially against Michigan State, but it's just another wrinkle to add. I think at a base level, you have to take this five minutes at a time if you are a member of the New Haven Chargers right now. Try to lock yourself in, get that communication unlocked, passing plays, some level of efficiency that we haven't quite seen yet. Yeah, good news is it's it's beginning of the day. I mean, it's coming up to 8.30 p.m. where I am, but you get my meaning. It's the beginning of the bracket. It's the beginning of, of this playoff tournament. So you'd be forgiven for not being at your best, but I think it is very ominous when after game one, I'm to cliche look again, historically the most anomalous of games in the best of seven series uh, game number one. You never really see that sort of form continue on for the rest of the series, but we did get out of it. Game number two was arguably worse for the New Haven Chargers 
than game number one. Certainly the scoreline suggests as much. So now we need to see New Haven digging themselves out of a hole that they have very much dug for themselves. And I think it calls on them just getting back to basics, making those individual calls, uh, or just having the defense of Pescados completely abandon their post. Well, well. Yeah, if the Pescados want to drop their shovels and stop oh, digging for fuck? a little bit, Pace said, Never mind. remove. I mean, that clearly opens up a lot more opportunities, but New Haven, they take advantage. It's an early strike here, and listen, any foot in the door is a good one for New Haven at this point. Please don't immediately score off the kickoff. I think it's oh, going right no. into the back of the net. <laughs> oh, man, that is brutal. Here I was, not giving Winsy fair respect. But Oryx, again, I don't think there is a defensive bone in his body, at least not for this particular series, because that's twice now where they've gone for some sort of save. And they've just completely missed the ball. Right? And speaking of, that's how you say brilliant reactions from Tasek off the line. But Marty gets another chance, and this time it's Kevin Pescados holding strong here at 1-1. We even really said, what if we get another kickoff goal? I think that would be <laughs> even funnier. But denied opportunity of that chance. Two strong shots, two better oh, saves. Man. False tried to get the self fish. It's still going to bounce to the bar. And a clear aside from Lindsay at least delays what feels like the inevitable Pescados the aggression on this push. Midfield what? line, big miscommunication there. One jumping quickly. False and Kevin both commit for this fall. So New Haven can breathe a little sigh of relief that Pescados didn't immediately punish. But at the same time, you've got to be cleaner at the midfield line. Somebody's got to make the call here. If it's Oryx or if it's Marzi or if it's absolutely nobody, stop double committing. Like, th this is immediately limiting what they can do in the midfield. And the fact that Evan from the midfield line, that ball goes completely unopposed into the back of the net. I don't know whether that Pescado's player was enough of a distraction. Uh, just, I'm not angry, Galgan. I'm just disappointed. I'm right there with you. Speaking of. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. Now we're entering the silly part of the series. Silly series where things just don't seem to matter. Winsy gets nice a kickoff goal here. I, it's a very nice calculation there to send it towards that near side on the early jump. I mean, that's the level of proactive play you need to see from New Haven to take a step forward. They'll collect this kickoff as well. Just about three minutes ago, Oryx trying to hit Marzi. Idea was there, execution a half step away, but it feels like New Haven are getting a little closer now. In a sea of inconsistency, it feels like Winsy is the one vessel providing calm, but even they themselves cannot stop Pescados from finding so much space in their own territory. False in particular continues to look strong, but this defense, not so much. I'm gonna try and credit the charges on this one. I think they've done a lot better in the transitional phases, especially since game number one. And I like these demos. I don't like that clearance though. I love that interception though. And guess what? It's Winsy again. If anybody's gonna take this series by the scruff of the neck, it looks like it's gonna be him. And far too often earlier on in these games, we saw Pescados with shot after shot, chance after chance. I'm right there with you. It feels like New Haven are mitigating that little by little as that riskily passes by the top of the box. Winsy looks for a quick clear. He does play it to the weaker side of the Pescados rotation, but Faults completely nullifies that narrative. Great. Gets it off the ground. Marzi with a block here to stop Asex from getting the shot immediately on, and Oryx will clear a side. New Haven may not have every offensive chance that they want, but they're certainly <laughs> trying their best to keep Pescados out of the zone themselves. Oh my goodness, Marty bumping Winsy out of position. Oryx at that back post was never going to get to that. Pasek actually forced to go all around the world and back, but oh, kind of sets up Winsy in a way. Successful bump. Marty with a successful chance, but Winsy, you've got to turn around quicker. There is an opportunity there. Maybe not confident enough in the limited boost reserves that he had. Now going for a bump, not going to find it. Pulse with the continuation of this play. Pulse Oryx. Expends all the boost, Marty. Great readjustment and a nice pinch downfield. Anybody's guess, but you feel like Pescados will have that one clear cut opportunity over their opponents. And um, there, it, there is. it is. <laughs> when you when you look at a play and you see it's a three on 
I'd say 0.5, honestly. Marzi was there, but only really in spirit rather than physically. That's the difference right there. New Haven can start to play as fast as they want, but Pescados, like the older brother holding their sibling's head at a distance, just kind of understanding, oh, so you want to play for real now? We have that second gear too, and they can step it up just as easily as you're seeing here. That was a solid plus one on the XG chart. <laughs> How on earth would you miss from there is the question that I ask. Uh, I'm sure that I would most certainly find a way, but these Pescados are most certainly continuing to put together much better shots than even I could imagine. Just 35 seconds left on the clock then. Still a one goal game, still a chance for the New Haven Chargers. It's 3v1! How on earth do you not take advantage of that situation? Kevin allowed to go away scot-free. Ping pong! Bottom pocket, 4-2. It's truly unfortunate though, because he said three on one, but they drew a tiny little sea bear circle at the top of the box and all sat within it as if they were scared that the Pescados would run them over and completely decimate any chance of winning. The chance was there, they couldn't jump at it. And unfortunately they suffer the consequences. They'll go down 3-0 in this series to the Pescados. Yes, as a Sonic fan once said, well, one, when will you learn? When will you learn that your actions have consequences, albeit in a much higher octave than what I provide here today uh, for you folks, but you just look at the scoreline in front of you. It's 4-2 in the game. It's 3-0 in the series. And I don't see a way for New Haven Chargers back into this bearing a Scooby-Doo moment where they take off the mask uh, and they're a completely different set of players. At the same time, on the flip side, Pescados, we talked about them being in form in this playoff bracket because there have been question marks of their own right in the closed qualifiers about not getting it done against teams on the top of the table. Make whatever case you want to or don't want to about the Drexel Dragons actually being the one seed in this field. They showed up to every tournament. They were grinding out constantly against teams that they played multiple times. They have every right to be in that top spot and the Pescados are going to have to play as well as they can to take them down. But nothing out of these past three games has convinced me that Pescados are shaky right now. They're looking yeah. like they're in their best form, which is exactly what you want out of a team going into the playoffs, especially considering all of the playoffs, except for that grand final, are played on this weekend. Of the two goals that the Chargers scored, there was maybe one whoops moment from Pescados. The first goal, which we thought might be a whoops moment, actually turned out to be a brilliant bump play. So on the one hand, yes. There, I mean, look, as much as I say I don't see much of a chance, there is still a sliver for New Haven Chargers. I think that overall, if they put their faith in Winsy and if they cut it out with the double commits, they are capable of taking a game off Pescado, so that I am sure. But they've given Pescado so much confidence over the course of 15 minutes now, where even if Chargers score, you don't see them keeping a clean sheet. Most certainly. And if you don't keep a clean sheet, then you're giving your opponents even more confidence to think that they can go ahead and win the game. Uh, uphill battle is probably the best description for this upcoming five minute period. I agree with you. I think it, it is very oh, the true. Battle bus. <laughs> oh, it's a battle bus. Oh, oh. there we go. Here Fantastic. We go. Thank you, New Haven. Triple battle bus loadout. The Almost battle bus brigade. Considered. Exactly. I'm. I'm very happy Another to way. see this. They're having um, fun. Oh. oh, no. Relic. No. They should have scored. <laughs> they really should have scored. That's the worst part about it. Oh. oh. Maybe you... maybe in a different car. Maybe in what? What, what do we reckon? One of the, the, the Ford F-150, perhaps? Bigger hitbox? Maybe. maybe. I don't, maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's a hypothetical. It is a, it's, a, it's a dinky little thing, isn't it, for a bus? Yeah, it's very, I mean, speaking from my experience, because we know how good of a player I am, it just feels so top heavy to the point where it almost feels like you don't have a back end of your car, which can really throw you off. But hey, if New Haven get out to a 1-2 goal lead in the triple battle bus setup, I think they're just the greatest team we've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Well, never mind. Yeah. Tasek says, hey, how about my musty fake? 
into an opening goal. How about that for them apples? Yeah, there's only so much fun you can have playing against a player like Pesek because I, I feel like there are few players in the collegiate scene that can equip the Dominus and I go, okay, it's just over. We get a little bit of a Spanish attempt potentially on the kickoff, so the full fun effect is in for New Haven. I think they realize where they're going in this series. They've still got some time to play this out, but at the end of the day, I mean, those Pescados, they're gonna use this to keep on rolling. It's, it's a little bit of a way to keep your hands warm, I guess. They're called Fisher College, but I mean, they got a bird for their mascot, but they are sending the horses to the bottom of the ocean, it seems. 2-0, uh, opening one minute 20. And yeah, th this kind of feels, I mean, they've gone for the full send kickoff there, New Haven. Uh, I don't want to say it's over, but everything in my essence is telling me that this is over. But hold that thought, folks, because that's an opportunity oh. and they still don't score. It's just every single time New Haven has an advantage on the attacking side, they just throw everybody at the first shot. It is routine. Like, they, they will all dive towards the goal line at the same time. And I get that that gives you a pretty good shot of scoring that first shot chance that you get. But as soon as Pescados get the save away, we've been touting this team's ability to transition and provide counterattacks, strong ones at that. You really can't back the Pescados to miss on their opening opportunity. So when you commit so far forward for a chance like that, New Haven, you're counting yourselves out on the transition. Oh, the post just a bit too wide out. Oryx puts it home and we've got a battle bus goal. We got a battle bus goal. We got a game. It's a one goal game. Admittedly, Marty has all the time in the world to set this up. Both Pescados defenders miss. Uh, it would be harder for Oryx to miss from that position. Gets it on target maybe makes something of this story that we thought was over. Well, speaking of over, one of the series has already come to a conclusion, Galgan, and I would describe it as a bit of an upset. Oakland takes down Ohio State Gray four games to nil. Another result has just come in, perhaps a little more expected. Oklahoma Christian dispatching of Cal 4-0. To be completely honest, I don't know if I'm on the upset train with Oakland versus Ohio State, but that's debatable. I think a sweep is a big result, uh, and it shows yes. that Oakland are back and ready to play. Speaking of sweeps, the Drexel Dragons take a sweep over Michigan State, so that result is locked in as well, and that means I am 3-0 in my predictions so far that I didn't say on stream, so they don't count, but with two minutes <laughs> to go, if the Pescados win this series, I keep on rolling. I believe you, mate. I believe you, and that's the most important thing here. It's cast of solidarity. That's a great opportunity. Martin's got to turn around quick here, and Tasek doesn't go for the throat. To be fair, he didn't need to. They've still got that one goal advantage, but I mean... It's certainly looking like New Haven have more than a couple chances to tie this one up and make it a very interesting non-conclusion to this best of seven, but another two-on-one as Kevin goes central. Falls a bit too far forward, not going to get much done, but it's sent back on target by Marcy. Not really where you want to put the ball. Pesek will pick things up where they were left off. Sidewall again. Sets up Marcy for a dribble back the other side, but just robs it back anyway. Double the commit, double the power, but sent right into the wall. And Oryx just has a free parking space to let that ball nice and neat at the top corner. Not so much red, but more like the rally box live here on twitch.tv forward slash rally cry to another result just in Terps taking down Thomas 4 and 0 oh. I think that's probably going to be 4 and 0 oh for your predictions as well Mr. Galgan uh, moving forward though they're still waiting on the result of this one Pescados with a slender lead still uh, uh, I mean listen Pescados I think that complacency has fully set in they got 30 seconds to hope that it doesn't bite them in the behind you would hope that New Haven were able to score on the chance they just had. Marcy jumps at this one, but a whole lot of resources committed. So Kevin goes up high, down low, one, two. No touch from Tasek. Three on one if False isn't careful here, but Winsy has no boost, and Oryx had the ball hit over top. Now two up on one back the other way. False tries to take it low, cannot quite succeed. This game is, is now officially on ice. The Pescados with a two goal lead and eight seconds to play. You back them for the sweep. As soon as you saw the, the singular battle bus, let alone the three, you kind of had a feeling that this would be a victory lap. 
for Pescado. It's not exactly the most flawless of victory laps. Maybe a stumble, maybe a bruise along the way here. That one goal for Oryx, the lone light in what has been a pretty dismal series for the Chargers. They'll be dropping down into the lower bracket to meet up against the Michigan State. Uh, one more for the road, I guess, for Oryx. Uh, but the damage has already been done. It is Sweep City here in the round of 16. And for, uh, oh my goodness, I've completely blanked for the Pescados. They join that elite heading into the quarterfinals of the upper bracket. And you know what? Fair play. This brings me back to the point I made in the middle of this four game series where you never want to be having the conversation two games into a best of seven about who your future opponents are. But as much as we can joke and jest about the triple battle bus set up here for New Haven and how they're not quite taking the game as seriously, you almost kind of wonder that with the long day ahead and with however many matches they think they can take in the lower bracket, you don't want to take that fourth game seriously. I know that sounds very counterintuitive. Teams want to win as many games as they can, but New Haven, not so much admitting a sense of hopelessness, but more so wanting to mentally reset themselves for a series that they back themselves to take against Michigan State. After that, they'll be playing the loser of match 16, I believe, which is Terps and Oklahoma Christian. So a tall task going against either of those teams. You need your mental to be in the best state possible. This, to me, reads as a full reset. Just completely yeah. forget this series happen and lock in for the lower bracket. And I'm, I'm completely with you, and I'm so glad that that's the case, because given the amount of times that, that Oryx and Martzi were stepping on each other's toes during that series, I mean, I would have gotten frustrated. I would have, I would have been livid. Uh, admittedly, you don't know what the situation is like in comms. Were there comms and they were just making the same mistake? Were there no comms? Was nobody taking responsibility or leadership? of the situation again the only player who seemed to have any sort of consistency uh was Winsy, who i think is definitely the one bright spot for for the chargers heading down into the lower bracket uh but if they are able to just laugh it off and say man that was <laughs> that was garbage let's go again got ourselves you know a lower bracket still ready and waiting for us uh, i think that's highly highly commendable meanwhile for the pescados right they go out of this it's a sweep it's quick and easy for them. Everybody's looking solid. Even with the early addition of Mexinical instead of False, game one looks solid. False yeah. gets into a game two. Paysec has a very, very regimented and locked in series. And Kevin as well, setting opportunities up. Just the threat of plays that can happen from Pescados. They're going up against Drexel next. Then if they go further than that, they've got, I mean, we're looking at Southern Miss Coca-Cola or the winner of Boise State Maryville, which still hasn't been reported. So a whole lot of hypotheticals to play with, but Pescados need to look as solid as they possibly can early on. And I think that's what they've proven here. They look as good as they can play against this level of competition. They know it has to hit another gear as they move further into the upper bracket. Hopefully they've got that locked in. Most certainly. Uh, one more result to bring to you. And after uh, a, basically a culture shock, I think, last time out for the UT Dallas, where they fell out of the bracket in spectacular fashion, they're kind of back to week one vibes. Um, Try to sweep as UT Dallas challenge level impossible as Southern Miss Gold take a game off them. But keep in mind, this is Southern Miss Gold we're talking about, not MSU, their sister outfit. I think that is actually a very impressive series performance from UT Dallas as they're going to be heading up against Oakland University in the quarterfinal stages. As you say, there's still an entire a uh, round match where we still haven't found out who's going to be going where. Boise State, Maryville, uh, Southern Miss Coca-Cola, Bowling Green State. Um, oh, you know, what? I got my Southern Misses mixed up. Never mind. I retract my statement. Losing a game against Southern Miss? What on earth's going on, UT Dallas? Or maybe I'm downplaying Southern Miss Gold. Let me know, chat. Uh, but looking at this head-to-head, -head, very evident on the stats side of things how Pescados won this. Oh, it's triple the amount of goals almost double the amount of shots and not too many more saves to make. New Haven's accuracy was left wanting. New Haven's defense was left wanting. Vescados could not have hoped for a better start to this bracket.
So we'll see whether or not New Haven decide to encroach upon the territory of Michigan State with battle buses. I highly doubt it, but that's a question <laughs> for them to answer in the lower bracket. We've got all but one result locked in. That is that Boise State and Maryville University series still waiting to be decided. And I expect it's going somewhat of the distance. And not so the case in Southern Miss Coca-Cola's favor. 4-0 sweep for them against Bowling Green State, which does make me 7-0, but listen, I'm not going to gloat too much. You know, I, I may have a gigantic brain in this skull of mine, but That's I'll true. keep it under wraps for now because we've still got so much more of this playoff bracket to go. Upper bracket round two is getting ready and locked in, and when we come back after this short break, we're headed down to the lower side of things in the upper bracket, of course, to show you the Terps Esports and Oklahoma Christian matchup it is sure to be a fantastic one we can't wait to see you there our generation isn't turning away from the world's problems watch us fly ahead rise to every challenge and overcome anything watch us become the next greatest generation 